Information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie when Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain. They're laundering disinfo when we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh. So this is the point of the show. We're going to say we're kidding. We're making all of this up. It's not really happening in the country you were born in, but it is happening. That's now a law enforcement official. It's also the person you just saw, an individual who brags about getting a master's degree from Georgetown University. In case you were wondering if the entire academic credentialing machine that sustains America's ruling class is in fact a joke. Spoiler alert, yes, it is a joke. Yes, it is a joke, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our evening edition of The Benny Show, where we are bringing you the most important document and report that possibly you will ever see. It will certainly determine the direction of our nation as to how we handle this report from The Intercept. Man, what are we doing? We're reading from The Intercept, a site so communist that Glenn Greenwald had to leave. They kicked out Glenn Greenwald. And here they go with the largest bombshell in my lifetime. There's never been a bombshell report like this Nothing like Edward Snowden, nothing like anything they ever published on Trump, even remotely scratches the surface of this level of government piracy against you, the American citizens. On its face, people should be sent to Guantanamo Bay. No, literally. People should be sent to the places where we send enemy combatants, all right? Because this is so corrosive to our freedoms and to what it, the foundation cornerstones of what it means to be an American. 1A, 1A, right up at the top. Every person in our government swears to protect it. You don't get a chance. I've know, I know many people who still work in the federal government. I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. You don't get a chance to be a member of our federal bureaucracy without swearing to uphold the Constitution inside of your federal agency. And at the very top of those rights that Americans have is the freedom to say and to think the way that we wish. There is no such thing as an illegal thought. There is no such thing as a legal speech. It is indeed our right to discern and to question the government. And now the government is openly colluding with large tech platforms in order to strip us of that right and to do so in order to influence elections. Let's read from The Intercept. The Department of Homeland Security is quietly broadening its efforts to curb speech in a, that it considers dangerous, dangerous by intervention by The Intercept had found years of internal DHS memos, emails, and documents obtained via leaks in an ongoing lawsuit, as well as public domain, illustrate the expansive effort by an agency to influence tech platforms. The work, much of which remains unknown to the American public, came to clearer view. Earlier this year, when DHS announced a new disinformation governance board, a panel designed to police misinformation, false information spread intentionally, disinformation, false information spread inten uh, intentionally, and malinformation, factual information shared typically out of context, harmful intent. That allegedly threatens U.S. interests. While the board was widely ridiculed, immediately scaled back, and then shut down within four months, other initiatives are underway at DHS to pivot to monitoring so-called media now, in its original mandate, the war on terror has been wound down. Let me begin this live by saying that George W. Bush was the worst president of my lifetime. Okay? Now, we haven't seen what Joe Biden has wrought fully on this country yet, but as it stands right now, I am 36 years old, George W. Bush was the worst president of our lifetime. George W. Bush was a sleeper cell president. He made the American populace, the freedom-loving, constitution-loving American populace, he was a psyop. He himself was a psyop, okay? Deep state Dick Cheney utilized George W. Bush to psyop us, the Republican base, into thinking that it would be smart to create massive new entitlement programs and massive new agencies in order to erode and to spy on the American people. DHS's job was to protect us from terrorists that live abroad, 
Now they have turned those massive, powerful tools of espionage in on the American people to spy on you. This is what The Intercept has found. And George W. Bush is the worst president ever in my lifetime. I think you may be able to list him among the worst presidents ever to have lived and to have occupied that office because of what he has done to us. He eroded our liberties. He gave us these bureaucracies, and now they have done what every bureaucracy does. Has They have been utilized for evil to destroy you and erode your liberties. This is the final stage, end stage bureaucracy for every government bureaucracy. That you're seeing the cancer and the atrophy inside the FBI, the DOJ, and all the like. Behind closed doors and through pressure of private platforms, the U.S. government has used its power to try and shape online discourse. According to meeting minutes and other Republic, other records appended in a lawsuit by Mater- Missouri Attorney General and hero Eric Schmidt, who's also running for Senate, discussions have ranged from scale and scope of government intervention and online discourse in the mechanisms and streamlining of takedown requests for false, intentional, and misleading information. Though DHS shuttered its disinformation board, the work continues. DHS plans to target inaccurate information on the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, the efficacy of the vaccines, racial justice, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the nature of the support, U.S. support, to Ukraine. War profiteering. The promotion of the regime. That is what this is about. Big corporation, big tech, fusing with big government, creating by definition a fascist state. That is what is happening here. Why are we learning about this? Because The Intercept is a right-wing site that wants to give you this information? No. We're learning about this probably because Elon Musk took over Twitter. Because Vijaya Gade, the loathsome, venal, and utterly repugnant Twitter half and safety, half and safety director, the health and safety lady, she was kicked out on her ass day one by Elon Musk. She was meeting monthly with DHS and the FBI and the tyrant state in order to try and tamp down on your speech. You heard the list right there, directly from the article. The origins of the COVID-19 pandemic and the efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine, racial justice, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. What misinformation is there about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan? That 13 American soldiers were butchered unnecessarily? That the regime botched this and got it so ass backwards that we became the laughing stock of the world? What exact misinformation is there? No, no, no. All this is is for war profiteering and to protect the regime. That's what this is for. And big tech bent right over and let them in. Facebook created a special portal for DHS and government safety partners to directly report The content that they didn't like. We didn't like this content. Please take it down. Executives from Twitter, Facebook, and Microsoft held regular meetings with the Department of Homeland Security to discuss censorship and a wide-ranging topics, including the withdrawal from Afghanistan, coronavirus, and racial justice. What exactly does racial justice have to do with this? Pray tell. In case you're wondering, this is simply... The absolute bulletproof evidence that the Biden regime is using the awesome power of our spy state and our espionage state in turning those weapons of war against you, the American people, to push and to psyop you into a far left radicalized freak show agenda where they can browbeat you, erode your quality and standard of living, destroy your free speech, and in turn, what you will get is a social credit state, which is much like China. They are also using this in order to influence and rig elections. Yes, that's right. They met with the FBI, according to Mark Zuckerberg. The FBI said, you better tamp down on this Hunter Biden laptop story. We know now through polling that that directly had an influence on the outcomes of the 2020 election. We know this for a fact. 
Now, what Mark Zuckerberg was saying on the Joe Rogan podcast here was that, yes, actually, the FBI came to us and they told us incorrectly that we are so nervous that the truth about the Biden family getting out will corrupt the outcome that we wish for this election, that we are going to force a private company to censor the truth. If this was coming out of a third world dictatorship or some country in the Middle East, this was coming out of China, you'd nod your head. You'd go, oh yeah, this is a communist dictatorship. But this is coming out of our own government. The article is there on screen. The information came to light via leaks as well as documents. According to the material, DHS targeted misinformation. Everything under the sun, including but not limited to the U.S. support for Ukraine. Now, why would they target disinformation on Ukraine? Except for they want permanent war. They want forever war. War is great for business and they want war profiteering and they don't want you to question that. And when they botch a 20-year war because the money's drying up, they don't want you to question that. Afghanistan. This is about the support of the institutions of power and the Democrat Party, specifically. There's also a formalized process for the government officials to directly flag content that they don't like on Facebook and Instagram so that it can be throttled or suppressed through a special Facebook portal that requires the government or law enforcement to email to use. At the time of writing, the content request system at facebook.com x takedown logins is still live. Let's go ahead and check right now. Is this still live? Yep. Still live. There you go. There it is. Still live. Right there on your screens. Request secure access to Facebook content request system. This portal is for onboarding partner requests pertaining to content issues with Facebook and Instagram. In case you're wondering if your government is colluding in order to erode your civil liberties. The FBI declined to comment. Meta declined to comment. In June, the same DHS advisory board which included Twitter's head of legal policy, trust, and safety, Vijay Gade, who is now currently standing in a bread line in San Francisco, trying not to get, um, you know, trying not to step on any syringes. Just kidding. She probably got like $50 million. I think that uh, Prague Agarwal got like $40 million on his way out. Too bad. And the University of Washington uh, professor drafted a report, a report to the government. So here's a private entity drafting a report to the government saying, strap that ball gag on hard, baby. Govern me harder, daddy. I want it now. I want it. And I want you. I want that censorship stick. And I want it to hurt. The report called for the agency to closely monitor social media platforms of all sizes, mainstream media and cable news, hyperpartisan media, talk show, radio, and other online sources. They argued that the agency needed to take steps to halt the spread of false and misleading information and that the focus on this information undermines key democratic institutions, such as the financial system. Oh, that's interesting, because if you look right here in the second paragraph of the original Intercept report, you will find that the FBI official that was running all of this crap, that she was also meeting with executives at J.P. Morgan Chase. That's a massive banking institution. I wonder, hmm, let's see here. Where have I seen in recent news that people are going to be debanked for misinformation? Where have I seen that? It's almost like, it's almost like, let's see. There's a, oh, that's right. A ruling now by PayPal to find people to steal their money if they publish thought crime. Remember that? Well, it's back. Apparently, PayPal re-added that into their terms of service. And so there it is, right in the TOS. 5,000 bucks you can be fined for, for thinking things that they don't like. They'll just steal your money. These jackals, barbarians at the door. These people. They are... Preparing to debank you. They debanked Kanye. They're preparing to debank you. Trust me. Why do you think Joe Biden's out there banging his fists together, talking about how MAGA is an extremist terrorist group? Because DHS, 
decided to no longer monitor terrorism. The purpose of DHS was the global war on terror. And now they're going to monitor you. You're the terrorists. Get it? Tucker Carlson covered this last night. Of course, we have to, we have to, like, pay homage to the throne. Tucker Carlson breaking this report down. Earlier this year, the Department of Homeland Security published its, established its own Ministry of Truth. It was so ridiculous it had to be disbanded almost immediately. The woman running it was so far out, she was a parody and discredited the censorship movement. But that doesn't mean DHS has stopped trying to censor you. Oh, they are. You just didn't know about it. Thanks to The Intercept, which just obtained many years of internal documents from DHS, we know that companies like Facebook and Twitter have been w working closely with the Biden administration to, quote, curb speech that the administration doesn't approve of. Emails also show that Twitter's top censor, Vijay Gotti, which is fired by Elon Musk, met every month with the Biden administration censors at DHS to talk about new ways to get you to shut up in unconstitutional fashion. Reading to you from Webster's Dictionary here, the definition of fascism, as academically understood, is the fusion of the state with corporate entities in order to have total power. Vijaya Gade is a fascist. She met with the government. She is a corporate C-suite level employee at Twitter meeting with the government entities in order to make sure that the massive stick of censorship can govern you harder, daddy. To make sure that these oath breakers inside of our federal government are able to use the Constitution as a gag and to strangle you with it, metaphorically. But, but, but guys, there's emails in this, in this report from, emails in this report from Microsoft talking about how, hey, listen, you're just going to have to get used to the government being involved in private business. We're just going to have to get used to it. Some like, some like, uh, Bill, some Bill Gates water boy running around at Microsoft. We're just going to have to get used to the government in our lives. People are going to have to get used to government intervention. Sickens me. The reporter was on Tucker's show and had this to say. God bless this man for publishing this report. And we will follow this clip by telling you exactly why we thought they You know, it. Tucker, uh, we looked at really hundreds of documents that paint a vivid picture of the FBI, the DHS, closely collaborating with the top social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook, to censor uh, various forms of content under the banner of fighting disinformation. And the story shows a couple of things. One, it shows what you just mentioned, a very cozy relationship between the government and these tech giants. Um, there's those monthly meetings that you just mentioned, uh, but also just very cozy emails and, and texts, um, not a very adversarial relationship. You know, we looked at one text where Microsoft executive texts uh, Jen Easterly, the top disinfo um, director at DHS appointed by Biden, basically saying the government needs to get, the private sector needs to get more comfortable with the government. Um, they're closely collaborating on reports talking about the expanded role for DHS in censoring a, a really broad uh, collection of, of, of topic areas, of, of, of policy and political topics. And, you know, just broadly speaking, uh, the story also just looks at the mission creep of DHS. This, this is an agency that was founded in the aftermath of 9-11 to combat foreign terror threats of al-Qaeda and the like. Um, but over the last five years, it's kind of uh, evolved in its mission. It's moved towards fighting disinfo, and their justification is, you know, uh, disinformation radicalizes uh, the homeland. It can lead to disruptions in public health or in political violence. Um, so they, they, yeah. they have a justification. We have these documents, and, and they're pushing forward uh, with this broad uh, censorship agenda. We often do not do this, and there's a rule against it on our show, because nobody likes uh, a braggart. But we told you so. We told you so. And it makes us so... It makes us so... Drawer papers. 
We want to throw our papers. We're angry. We're angry. We have righteous indignation. We told you so. Media Matters clipped this. They went nuts. Because we heard on our program the keen eyes of Danny DeUrbina and ALX, the Lord. They heard Jen Psaki say something, and we caught it before anyone else. And we said, what is this? Jen Psaki saying that she sits down with Facebook and tells them what to censor. These jackals, they straight up told you what they were doing. And if you were listening, and we were, you would have freaked out about it like we did at the time. Everyone told us to calm down. Well, who's laughing now? This is a big issue of misinformation, specifically on the pandemic. In terms of actions, Alex, that uh, we have taken or we're working to take, I should say, from the federal government, uh, we've increased uh, disinformation research and tracking uh, within the Surgeon General's office. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook uh, that spread disinformation. We're working with doctors and medical professionals to connect uh, to connected medical experts with. That's all you need to hear. Okay. That's all you need to hear. The clip is longer, but that's all you need to hear. We're flagging problematic posts for Facebook. You degenerates. Where is the Gitmo trials? I want trials. Where are the trials? I want impeachments. I want letters from lawyers. I want investigations by Republicans. I demand trials. These people are oath breakers. You right now, currently watching on social media, tens of thousands of people right now across all platforms watching on social media, the federal government right now has agencies devoted to eroding and stealing and destroying this show, your speech, your rights. The only job of our government is the protection and upholding of those rights. The federal government is working with private companies to force them to censor true information or information that they don't like. Afghanistan withdrawal, COVID-19, racial justice, or Hunter Biden's laptop, as we know for a fact based on polling done by the Media Research Center, the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story had a had a truly non-de minimis outcome on the 2020 election. According to the Media Research Center, it was enough to swing the election for Donald Trump. So yes, influencing elections, meddling in elections, our elections. Why are they releasing this? Because Madman's in charge of Twitter, that's why. Madman's in charge of Twitter. Madman. Elon Musk got all these messages. Most of these messages centered around Twitter. Because Twitter is always the first. Twitter was the communist cesspool. The think tank for censorship. It was the USS censorship. Run by Marxists. And fully and totally compromised by the national security state. And when Elon Musk got a hold of these messages, they began to leak. Now, we do not have definitive proof that Elon Musk leaked these messages to The Intercept, but we know in our bones that the reason they're publishing this and getting ahead of this story is because Madman took over Twitter and he was going to leak these messages as soon as he found out. Elon Musk has begun leaking messages. Elon Musk hates the regime. Elon Musk was asked for a quote about Joe Biden from the Washington Post this week, and Elon Musk called him a wet sock puppet. Elon Musk called him President Teleprompter. Remember this best moment from sweet Elon. But it's not as if Biden has flipped the script and said, okay, we're going to go 180 degrees in the other direction. He's kind of kept it the same. Which has been really surprising, actually. Man, it's hard to tell what Biden's doing, if you're totally frank. Um, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel, I feel like it's the, weekend the, at Bernie's. The, 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 the real president is whoever controls the teleprompter, you know? 
It's like it's like the, the, what, the path to power is the path to the teleprompter, you know, like what because what, that then he just reads the teleprompter. So, you know, I, I do feel like, like if, if somebody would accidentally lead on the lean on the teleprompter, it's going to be like Anchorman. It's going to be like QQQ ASDF one, two, three, you know, type of thing. Um, <laughs> I mean, in fairness to Biden, he, he hasn't been napping as much as he needs to, but <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, it's hard to say that like, job. I mean, things just... that are getting done, you know, it, this, I mean, this administration just, just it doesn't seem to get a lot. Joe Biden threatened to blow up Elon Musk's Twitter deal. Now, he couldn't get it done. They tried. They tried to stop the purchase of Twitter by Elon Musk because what Twitter was doing was essentially purchasing a fourth branch of government. He was essentially purchasing a PSYOP bot site intended and fully operated, as is revealed here, by our federal government and the agencies without and within. This is the biggest story of our lifetime. These people are truly deserving of Gitmo trials. The, pe- the person who would put them there is without question, far and away, and by miles, the best man on this issue, Josh Hawley from the United States Senate, who was red hot last night about this report. So what are we going to do about it, Senator? Well, what we're going to do is hold the people accountable who've repeatedly lied to us, Jesse. And that includes, by the way, lying to my face, because I sat there and listened while Alejandro Mayorkas, who's the head of of DHS, Homeland Security, said, oh, no, wait, this board is just a working group. That's not true. This board has never met. That's not true. We're not actually monitoring American speech. That is not true. You know what really is disinformation, Jesse? What's really disinformation is that the Biden administration believes in democracy. Because here's what they think. If you will do what they tell you to do and believe what they tell you to believe and vote the way they want, then they're for it. But if you want to have your own idea or speak your own mind or look into things for yourself, then they will monitor you. Then they will censor you. Then they will use the government against you. Jesse, that right there, that is a threat to our democracy. And we've got to do something about it. They will monitor you. They will censor you. And Josh Hawley said that DHS, Alexandro, Alexandro, Mayorkas, Alexander Mayorkas, that he lied to his face, that he asked him about this and he said he'd shut it down. These people have lied to your face. These people are goblins. They're salty goblins. There are so many lies that happened to the faces of senators. It was impossible asking my team to go find the worst examples. But here, ladies and gentlemen, is our favorite example for certain. When Rand Paul went so hard at Fauci that Fauci literally began to involuntarily shake because of his lies. Fauci, of course, being a person behind. Where do you think this is coming from in the report? Here it is, right at the top of the report. Top of the report. Top of the report. We are going to censor people who say things we don't want them to say about COVID or the COVID vaccine. Where do you think that comes from? It comes from the rat doctor, this man. I think you've got no idea what disinformation is, and I don't think the government's capable of it. Do you know who the greatest propagator of disinformation in the history of the world is? The U.S. government. Are you familiar with McNamara, the Pentagon Papers? Are you familiar with George W. Bush and the weapons of mass destruction? Are you familiar with Iran-Contra? I mean, think of all the debates and disputes we've had over the last 50 years in our country. We work them out by debating them. We don't work them out by the government being the arbiter. I don't want guardrails. I want you to have nothing to do with speech. You think we can't determine, you know, speech by traffickers is disinformation? You think the American people are so stupid they need you to tell them what the truth is? You can't even admit what the truth is with the Steele dossier. I don't trust government to figure out what the truth is. Government is largely disseminating disinformation. Uh, okay, a couple things here. One, based, Rand Paul. Two, that is not the Rand Paul Fauci clip. We will play that in just a moment. We apologize. That's Alejandro Mayorkas getting abso- an absolute truth enema from the good doctor, Rand Paul. He did it surgically, and it was painful, and it was 
really, ladies and gentlemen, something to see. When Rand Paul goes in, I've watched Rand Paul do surgery. I actually went to Haiti with Rand Paul and watched him do eye surgery. Dude, this guy is a truly masterful surgeon. And the way that he goes at these guys breaks them. Who did they want to put in charge of this channel, your channel? You have, a, you have a channel. You wouldn't be able to watch this if you didn't have a channel, if you didn't have your own Facebook, Instagram, if you didn't have your own, well, we're not live on Instagram. YouTube, by the way, sh what up to YouTube? God bless all of you. We're getting some record viewership right now on YouTube. Uh, you wouldn't be able to watch this if you didn't have your own channel. You have your own channel. You have your own site. They monitor you. They go through in this report and say that one of the accounts flagged had 21 followers. It was listed as a parody account, and the avatar of the account was that demonic blue horse from the Denver airport that everybody says is uh, like a satanic symbol. That was the account. They were flagging, essentially, stan accounts, sock puppet accounts, as dangerous disinformation. This is how weak these people are. This is how terrified the regime is. And this is why Elon Musk, he is beginning to release internal documents. He's beginning to release the Twitter file. He's going to release the document. I mean, listen, Zuckerberg came out. Zuckerberg came out and said, yo, the FBI came to us to try and destroy free speech. And you know what? We didn't, we didn't all, but we didn't completely censor it, but we tamped it down. We deboosted it. We made sure that you couldn't see it. Why? Because of this, this story and Joe Biden and Joe Biden deserves total and complete impeachment for this. The person that they wanted to censor you, the person that was in charge of you and your content online, who was going to be the arbiter of what you can say and whether you sharing a, a meme about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan or the Ukraine war gets you kicked offline and essentially debanked on social media, right? Because it's really just debank. It's just, it's just depersonhood. It's the same thing. If you steal someone's social media, if you take that away from them, this is the public square. I may be in my house right now. We have a studio in our house, right? We have, we have a spare bedroom. That's where I am right now. But I am able to speak to you. This is the public square. Let's say I was standing in Times Square. I'd be able to, to yell on a box. Free speech. It was never intended to just be that because free speech applied to and was the most protected for people with large platform, newspapers, publishers, media outlets back when it was written. 1A. And they are violating it. And who do they want in charge? Mary Poppins. Famous or powerful, Barbara Streisand has it all and I can do what she can do. So why is she rich, famous, and powerful? While I'm still stuck here singing Christmas songs for all of you. What does it take to be famous and powerful? Santa, if you're listening, please tell me what to do. What do I to be famous and powerful? I've done everything I can. My God, my God. Okay, I'm sorry. What was I thinking? We need to play the cringe alert before we play stuff like that. I apologize. I warn you. I will warn you before we do another Nina Jankowicz clip. We promise to play you an alert so that you are aware of what we are about to put into your eardrums. All right? We will play the cringe alert, so be prepared. Okay? We are about to play you what Nina Jankowicz thinks of critical race theory. This is the lady they wanted in charge of your speech online. Be prepared, and when you hear this sound, and when you hear the cringe alert, you will know to be prepared, to, to, to turn your volume down at the very least. Please don't turn the show off. We're warning you. We're trying to do our part. Okay? Here we go. Critical race theory has become one of those hot button issues that uh, the Republicans and, and other, you know, disinformers um, who are engaged in disinformation for profit, frankly, there are plenty of, you know, media outlets that are making money off of this too, have, have seized on. And I live in Virginia uh, and in Loudoun County, that's one of the areas um, where people have really honed in on this topic. Mm, okay, got it. So the lady who says that the critical, that critical race theory being taught is a myth, the lady who was totally in favor of the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story, totally in favor of rigging the election. That lady, 
that lady is going to be in charge. This is why the regime is running terrified. This is why they are so scared. This is why Dr. Fauci shakes under questioning because it is in total collapse. They are aware, by the way, that they are in collapse. That's why rat doctors like Dr. Fauci are leaving. They're fleeing government. Dr. Fauci is resigning this month, by the way. We should throw a party. We'll do a live party. Pop champagne. Dr. Fauci is resigning this month because he knows what's about to happen. They're about to get all their documents. The reason you're seeing this report is because Elon Musk is about to reveal all their documents. Can we get up the tweet, by the way, guys? Can we get the tweet of Elon Musk, His just his first beginnings of the release of the text messages inside of Twitter? Why? And, and also, can we get that? And the I want to put up the Vijaya Gade cried during her meetings about this. There's a reason why. Elon Musk has begun to release the messages. You, we are going to be able to see Dr. Fauci's internal communications. We're going to be able to see everything. You're going to learn the truth. You have uh, we don't we don't deserve it, but we're going to we're going to get it from Elon Musk. God bless him. We don't deserve Rand Paul either. This was the clip that I was originally going to play you of Dr. Fauci getting shaking and turning into like essentially having a seizure under questioning from Rand Paul. And the reason he's having a seizure is because of what's on your screen right now. Before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elon Musk. Elon Musk is releasing the internal communications of Twitter. There you go. Wow. Looks like Twitter board deliberately hid the evidence from the court. Stay tuned. More to come. Why do you think they're getting ahead of this? Why do you think they're getting ahead of it? They're getting ahead of it because Twitter, they knew what they did. They were a government spy agency to destroy your civil liberties. They found out Dr. Fauci was the same thing. And that is why Dr. Fauci shakes under interrogation. And that is why Dr. Fauci is resigning. Why? Now you're getting into something. If the point that you are making is that the, the, the grant that was funded as a sub-award from EcoHealth to Wuhan created SARS-CoV-2, that's where you are getting. Let me finish. We don't know. Well, we don't wait know a minute. It did I come can, from the lab, but you, all the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab. You, and there will be responsibility for those who funded the right. lab, including yourself. I totally This committee resent, will allow the witness to respond. I totally resent the lie that you are now propagating. What we're alleging is that gain-of-function research was going on in that lab, and NIH funded it. That you is can't not, get away from it. It meets your definition, and you are obfuscating the truth. I'm Senator not Paulie, obfuscating the truth. Senator you Paulie, are the one. Time has expired, but I will allow the witness to... Let me just finish. I want everyone to understand that if you look at those viruses, and that's judged by qualified virologists and evolutionary biologists, those viruses are molecularly impossible. You see it? Do you see the hand? The team is doing an amazing job here, live clipping. Do you see the hand? Do you see Dr. Fauci? There in the corner involuntary seizure. This is because his heart rate is going through the roof and because he's scared. He's running like a rat. He's resigning because he does. He knows that the documents are going to come true to the public light. And he knows that madmen like Elon Musk are going to release hell on these people. Check out this uh, article on the screen right now. Twitter's top lawyers reassure staff cries during meeting about Musk takeover. <laughs> this is Vajaya got it. Vajaya got it. She was fired. Fired. Day one. This sick, insipid person. Man, do we have that Tim Pool clip? That based Tim Pool clip? I know we played it. I know we played it a couple of uh, a couple of lives ago. That based Tim Pool clip. I don't know if that's her on screen. Is that her on screen? Have we confirmed that? Is that her? That's definitely someone who's not happy with Elon Musk. Vijay Gade, man, uh, got completely BTFO'd back in the day by what Tim Pool would call Fat Tim Pool. That's what he said on his show the other day. And we love Tim Pool. We were up on his show uh, a couple of a couple of weeks ago. And Tim Pool went on the Joe Rogan show. According to Tim Pool, his job was to 
be the inquisitor and to question, uh, to question uh, Vajay Gade on Twitter's insane censorship policies. And Tim Pool did an absolutely spectacular job. The reason why we know that Vijay Gade belongs in jail, that Vijay Gade belongs before a congressional committee at the very least, is that here she is on Joe Rogan's podcast, the most listened to podcast in the world, the most listened to man on the planet, and she is taking that massive audience and she is literally lying to them. She is literally saying, no, we're not doing the things that you're accusing us of. And here, standing before us right now, is the article from The Intercept, a far left-wing publication, stating definitively that Vijay Gade in this clip to Tim Pool's face and to Joe Rogan's face lied. Lied about their censorship regime, about being essentially a fourth branch of government in order to erode your civil liberties, meeting every single month with the feds and then bitching about, you just going to have to get used to the feds being more part of your life on social media. There's a meme. There's always a meme about like my FBI agent crying when he's looking at my memes, right? I, I don't, you know, there's like, there's always a meme of an FBI agent who's like, sad and he's sitting there, his guns on the table and he's like, he's got his FBI shirt on and he realizes his life is a lie because he's, he's reading our memes, right? That we have saved. He's able to access our phones or our discord channels or our telegram channels. Guys, this was when we realized that Vijay Gade's life was a lie. And Tim Pool has every right to be doing a victory lap right now. I hope he's drinking that, um, uh, Louis the 13th or whatever he opened up when Elon Musk took over because dude, e uh, Tim pool was one of the reasons why this lady was fired because of this show. Listen to her lie. Watch with a list of private phone numbers, addresses yet. Kathy Griffin, she's fine. The guy who threatened the lives of these kids in Covington and said, lock them in the school and burn it down. You did nothing. I mean, he got suspended to take his tweets down. Was he banned for threatening the lives of kids? Absolutely not. So again, we have, and I'm, I'm happy to talk about all these details. We have our policies that are meant to protect people, and they're meant to enable free expression as long as you're not trying to silence somebody else. Now, we take a variety of different enforcement mechanisms around that. Sometimes you get warned. Sometimes we're, your tweet is forced to be deleted. It's a very rare occasion where we will outright suspend someone without any sort of warning or any sort of um, ability to understand what happened. What did you guys do with it? But Tim, those accounts were actioned. They may not have been actioned the way you wanted to, to but the, the tweets were forced to be deleted, and the account sure, sure. Is, I, I, took I, a penalty for that. So I, I, I understand that. What but kind of a penalty? Well, again, as I said earlier, Joe, we don't uh, usually uh, automatically suspend accounts with one violation because we want people to learn. We mm -hmm. want people to understand what they did wrong and give them an opportunity not to do it again. So... To recap here, ladies and gentlemen, in a 7,000-word essay from The Intercept in leaked documents, The Intercept has definitively proven that the federal government, DHS, FBI, and other federal agencies, up until August... Which, what happened in August? Hmm. Did it, guys whose name rhymes with Milan Busk take over one of these spy agencies, de facto spy agencies for the federal government? They had bi-weekly meetings. They created special portals so that the federal government could weep, could cry, could bitch, could moan, could sob to their corporate tech overlords and could say, eliminate this person's free speech. At what point do you begin to recognize that the federal government is the baddies? At what point does the federal government look at it, uh, the guys inside the federal government who swore to uphold the Constitution, who swore to uphold 1A, and by the way, the First Amendment does not mean that there is such a thing as hate speech. It doesn't mean that there is such a thing as wrong think. I'm sorry, there is speech you don't like. There is speech that I disagree with. I'm a Christian. There are so many things that is said about my Lord and Savior 
that I don't like in Hollywood and culture. What does that mean? Does that mean that I take over an entity and then I ban people who say bad things about the church, about Christianity? Well, yeah, I guess if you're a leftist, that is what it means. And these people are godless. They do have a church, the church of secularism, humanism, hedonism. It's dark. It's demonic. It is not, uh, 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 it is not of the light. It is of the dark. And that is what they worship. They worship their self, themselves, and they worship their own power on this earth. And so, yes, of course, they will use the, a, a heretic's lens to look at people like you who question their religion. Their religion is power. Their religion is government forever. Their religion is Marxism. They are Marxists. There must come a day when they look at each other and say, hey, uh, excuse me, are, are we the baddies? I don't, so. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. You are. You got skulls. We got skulls in our cap, Hans. Hans, we got skulls in our caps. But skulls? Are we the baddies? Yes, you are. And we're going to need a Donald Trump 2024. We're going to need a strong man in this office in order to break it. In order to say, yeah, you people don't get to do this any longer. And in fact, the people who did violate civil liberties get to be impeached, jailed, charged. You are. It is illegal to use your federal government position to violate our civil liberties. We're deeply, deeply thankful for this reporting by The Intercept. We tried very hard to get this reporter on the show tonight, and there were major conflicts uh, schedule-wise. And so we will work hard and endeavor to get Lee Fang on the program later. Uh, seems like a very nice guy. The purpose of the control of these narratives is, of course, not truth. It is simply power through control and the manufacture of fraudulent narratives like BLM and Antifa were mostly peaceful, like Hunter Biden's laptop wasn't real, like Donald Trump was a Russian agent, Nick Salmon was a, a vicious racist, Jesse Smollett was attacked in a racial attack. This was the point. The point was to propagate falsehood, not to protect truth, but to quite literally use the awesome powers of the federal government, the espionage state fused with the PSYOP state and the corporate, vertically integrated social media platforms, which have more power than any of the networks or any media company has ever had. Sorry, there's no media company that's been as big as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google. They are the media, okay? They are the publisher's clearinghouse. They are the airwaves upon which information is transferred. That makes them more powerful than any media entity on earth. And so when you are warping and perverting and using these agencies for your degenerate messages about racial justice, which is in the article, then you are truly evil. You deserve to be tried, subpoenaed, brought before Congress. You deserve civil penalties. You are an oath breaker. Our problem is not that bad things and, and accounts that do and behave in bad ways. And plus, tr trust me, we get our fair share of death threats and our fair share of nasty DMs. Just water off the duck's back. Just how it goes. This, you know what? Them's the breaks, man. That's how it works in this business. Fine. Our issue is not that accounts that behave badly shouldn't have some type of consequence. Our issue is that one side is allowed, allowed to create death threats and to create false narratives. That, it, that uh, They're allowed to foment violence against you, your neighbors, your elected officials, and nothing happens, as Tim Pool was getting at there with his Vijaya Gatti questioning. This was perfectly crystallized uh, after the Paul Pelosi attack, when 
another Paul, a Rand Paul, got on the airwaves last night and said, hey, um, interesting. Nancy Pelosi's own children were cheering my attack when I was beat within an inch of my life with a hammer. What did social media do to her? When I was assaulted, I was struck once in the back. I didn't hear my assailant coming because I had noise cancellation earphones on. I was struck once in the back so hard that I had six ribs broken, including three of them that were completely separated. My lung was damaged. I coughed up blood for over a year. My lungs filled up with fluid. I about died from an infection, had part of my lung removed, and then Nancy Pelosi's daughter felt free to go ahead and tweet that, um, you know, my neighbor should come back and do it again, that my neighbor was right. My current political opponent tweets out and has an ad that he created mocking my attack. One of his campaign workers said that the attacker, who uh, the assailant who struck me in the back is her personal hero. Another one of my camp- my opponent's uh, campaign uh, leaders actually put my address up and then puts pictures of me injured. And the implication is, I guess, this is where he is if you want to finish the job. And so, no, the left doesn't really care. They make everything political. But I will tell you sincerely, I do want Paul Pelosi to make a speedy recovery. And I know what it's like to go through the pain. And I know he's in pain today. And I think we should see him as a human being, not as just sort of this, you know, we dehumanize everybody in politics. It's like people don't care. They think you don't feel pain. Well, I certainly did and certainly still do. And I think we should have some compassion for Paul Pelosi and not make everything about politics. Good for you, Rand Paul. And good for Elon Musk. You get that? You ever, if you smelled the air recently, you felt the energy, it smells like we're winning. You ever get that like weird hope that we're actually winning out there and that these evil regimes will do what all evil regimes do and collapse under their own incompetence and banality? I certainly get that impression. I'm starting to get those feelings right now. Starting to get that hope right now. I'm starting to believe that people have had a a belly full of this. And yo, there's a lot of wood to chop. And so I'll conclude by simply stating uh, Republicans, and a lot of them come on the program. We have a stacked week with some wild announcements for you about what we're going to be doing at the end of the week. Um, We're going to hold their feet to the fire. You believe that. Believe that. Every day will go by with shows like this and audiences like this. And we had record viewership tonight. And so I thank you. Audiences like this, movements like this, like ours, right now, we are going to be demanding that our leaders finally act. We've had enough. We've had enough, man. We're going to be demanding that the people that we put in this office like actually go in on these communists and these Marxists and break up these rat's nests of evil villains who quite legitimately are oath breakers and defy our constitution, attempt to rig our elections, and attempt to erode our civil liberties in the name of safety. Nope. Nope. It's always in the name of the same thing, power and control. It's all the communist cares about. And the communist cares about that power, and so we must remove them from power. We have to remove power from them. We've got to fire them, impeach them, And we got to make sure that they don't work in federal government ever again. And if charges are merited, you know, you should jail these people. I mean, truly, if they're infringing on the rights of American citizens, then there should be penalties. And we endeavor uh, for that battle and we endeavor on that journey. The Disinformation Governance Board, destroyed. Uh, But it lives on, just like all bad ideas. And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got work to do. And we will do it. All together. All together now. Here on The Benny Show. God bless you, and thank you for watching tonight.